Alex says, the Pac-12 seems to be in a state of cannibalism and competition with every team having at least one loss. With only four teams that are at only one loss, the Arizona schools, Utah, and Oregon. Do you think any team has playoff hopes and how do you think it will turn out for the Pac-12 and my team, University of Arizona? Doesn't Washington also, did Washington lose? I don't think UW lost. I think UW also has one loss. Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Uh, Alex, the problem with the Pac-12 is that there's no top team. The Big Ten has Ohio State. And the ACC has Clemson. The Big 12 has Oklahoma. The SEC has Alabama. They also have Georgia and LSU. And I think Georgia, LSU, and Alabama would all go undefeated. In fact, all six teams, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma, Alabama, LSU, and Georgia, all six of those teams, if you inserted them for a year into the Pac-12, would go undefeated and run the table. They would just knock the crap out of the Pac-12. There's no top dog on the West Coast in the Pac-12. There just is not. I I thought maybe UW would be that team this year. They haven't been. They lost to Cal. Sounds like this guy didn't include I I thought for sure they won last week. Did they not win? Who knows, right? I I I don't know. My point is this. The Pac-12 has no shot at the playoff. They don't. They're really, really competitive, man. They're, They're just so, like, tight. Oregon, Washington, Arizona State, Arizona, Utah, Washington State, USC. All these middle-of-the-road teams that are really competitive with each other. And the Pac-12 is, if you like put the Pac-12 in a vacuum and you only watch Pac-12 football and the SEC didn't exist and the Big Ten didn't exist and the Big 12 didn't exist, you would love it. I mean, the big the Pac-12 is so fun if you only look at the Pac-12. A lot of people on the West Coast where I live do that. They only watch the Pac-12. And if you do that, it's a good time. It's really competitive. It's really fun. But the truth is, a ton of good teams mean that none of them stand out. And nobody dominates. And on the national level, the Pac-12 is way behind. They get their butts kicked by teams. It's like, oh, man. Uh, Yes, Cal beat Ole Miss, right? But like Ole Miss, it's not a big deal. Until the Pac-12 has a team that dominates its own conference, that makes other teams look silly. Like if I thought UW had a chance to do this. I thought UW had a chance to run the table this year because they they had bigger offensive linemen. They're a little better. They had a rainy game. They lost to Cal. It's unfortunate, right? But until the Pac-12 has a team that dominates everybody else in their conference, they're not going to make a playoff. They're just not going to do it. Right now, I do think the best hope for the Pac-12 is either University of Washington. They have a great head coach. They have some really big guys up front. I love their offensive and defensive line. That's it. They they have a chance there. If USC can get an elite head coach, USC with good recruiting could elevate their program. But in general, the Pac-12 is the worst of... The And maybe not the worst as a whole, but the Pac-12 doesn't have a dominant team and their recruiting is not as good and the level of talent, the highest level of talent in the Pac-12 is not as good as the highest level of talent in every other conference. And so the Pac-12 is sagging behind. They're just not a great nationally. They're not a big deal nationally. They're kind of, they are cannibalistic. They very much feed on each other. And if you, again, if you put the Pac-12 in a vacuum, it'd be awesome. But nationally, the Pac-12 is not relevant because they don't have anybody that can compete with those top sco- six schools. You know, Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, LSU. Who is the other one? Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, LSU, and Oklahoma. And I, I think Texas would run the table in the Pac-12. So, man, the Pac-12 is just behind everybody else. And that is why they have no shot to make it into the college football playoff. People who support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Zach Shomler. It's a dollar a month. If you want to give me a dollar a month, you can. Great. I really appreciate it. You want to give me more than that? That would be even better. It pays my bills literally. I survived doing this. Um, But a dollar a month gives you access to submit questions to me. And I, with my eyeballs, look at every single question that is submitted on patreon.com. I only accept questions on Patreon through the Patreon DMs. Or through, you can comment on the posts. I leave posts uh, saying, ask Zach this week, comment below. Now, I will not guarantee, if you pay me money and submit a question, I will not guarantee to read it on the show. There's so many. I only, I try to read a couple of the top ones every week. But I do look at all of them with my eyeballs. And I pick the top couple to read on the show. 